Hey everybody, Johnny here. Welcome to another Comfy Armchair vlog. And today I've been thinking a lot about monetization in games. And, you know, how did we get to the place we're at where we have so many sort of predatory systems in games for you to put in, plug in real money to get either some kind of in-game item or progression. And, you know, I... I can't help but be like the old man, you know, think back to the games. And, you know, here I have, for example, Mass Effect 2. You know, this game, how many hours, guys? A hundred hours you could easily put into this. And, of course, it's everything, you know, everything is in the disc. And, as always, Basil, come in here to say hi to y'all. Hello, buddy. Hello. Yeah, this paw is mine. No. <laughs> okay. Good. So now that we've done the old man charade, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Dota 2, a case where I thought it felt great to give money to something that gave me so much value. So I played Dota 2 uh, competitive for a little bit, um, but just so many hours, right? Over 5,000 hours or almost 6,000 hours total. And the game was free, so you could play it for free. None of the stuff you could buy gave you any sort of advantage in game. It was all just cosmetics and hats, as they say. Uh, and for me, it felt amazing to be able to like showcase my support for the game by having like a cool skin for a hero or something like that. And it felt like giving back to something that gave me so much enjoyment. So it felt like a fair trade and a willing one at that. Like, it, it, it wasn't being shoved you know, down my throat. It wasn't being uh, called upon for me with so much impetus. Nowadays, you know, games really have the store in your face the whole time. And at least at the time when I was playing Dota 2, it felt much more like a willing support kind of thing that you could do if you wanted and you were in a position to do so and you didn't have to do otherwise. Not only that, but the money that went into cosmetics, they also used for the prize pool of the next international. So every year there's a big international uh, tournament with, you know, the best Dota 2 teams. And the prize pool is mostly comprised of money coming from these cosmetic purchases. And it's in, in the millions. Okay, so the first team to first place wins something like, you know, millions of dollars or euros, whatever it is. And it started off as one million with Valve, you know, footing the bill for that one million. And then every year it has grown. Every year it's a bigger prize pool. And it's all due to the people who play the game also contributing via cosmetic purchases. To me... That's a great system. People buying are happy because, again, they want to provide value back and they're getting something dope in return, a, a, cosmo, a skin for their favorite hero or whatever it is. And the competitive scene also flourishes because the incentives to win the tournament and tournaments go up. The whole system kind of feeds itself in a very natural way. That's an example where, for me, it feels like a great system to to kind of plug money into the machine where nobody feels like they're being, you know, toiled with or or kind of forced to do anything. Now, some recent releases have taken this goodwill and exploited it to the extreme. So, for example, Tales of Arise, a recent game to come out an interesting JRPG that, you know, had some issues that caused me to not want to play it. But ultimately, an interesting game to come out. It has the most predatory, like, uh, DLC system. If you can call it DLC, you can buy things like, you know, uh, experience boosts, all sorts of in-game boosts to, to kind of expedite. And each of these is like a DLC purchase. And all of these things are on disc day one. So these aren't really DLC in any way, shape or form. 
you're just paying for like game modifiers that otherwise in most games would just be included, right? And if you bunch up all the DLC that you can buy for this game, it's in the hunt like a hundred over a hundred dollars worth of DLC that you can buy. And this stuff is being pushed to you via an in-game shop at, in every menu you open, as far as I've been able to tell. So that to me is taking it to a level that I'm not happy with, right? It's saying we're using up all the goodwill that you may have with the game and we're trying to monetizing, monetize it aggressively. And that to me doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. And a lot of the times what I feel like is this equation of goodwill is being flipped. It used to be, like in the case of Dota, that the product generates a lot of goodwill with the fan base because it's a good product, people love the game. You're giving a lot of value initially, plugging value into that equation, you're generating goodwill out of that, and then naturally people want to do things to give back. And I think that's, again, the good balance that Dota 2 had going, at least when I was playing it. I'm not sure where it's at now, but a lot of dev teams or publishers, I don't know what it is, put the cart before the horse. And they're like, we're going to monetize the goodwill before it's even there. This game is not out, but we're selling all this crappy DLC for it. And because of how our brains work, this, you know, to some level actually works. Think back to all the mobile games and how, you know, people spend lots of money in these microtransactions because they want to be able to progress in the phone, right? And it's like, oh, buy this 10,000 platinum coins now so you can keep advancing and progressing in your game. Otherwise, you gotta wait until tomorrow. And our shitty brain, guys, kind of falls for this stuff a lot of the time, right? And this is why I think the word predatory is not an overstatement. We're not overstating the situation when we say that some of these monetization practices are predatory. Ultimately, it is everybody's responsibility to be fiscally responsible and to not fall into these things. But there is also some aspect that the people behind these products oftentimes are predatory again on this weakness that we have. And, you know, they're trying to keep our attention on the game, just like Facebook does with their platform, right? They want to keep you there and they're doing all these shenanigans and using psychology to kind of hack your system into staying there and being engaged. You know, a lot of these mobile games and some of the recent games with their microtransactions are doing the same thing. And I think it's getting to a point where, you know, something has got to give because at some point it's going to reach a level where just nobody's happy with it. And either we need to step in and, you know, force them to change the status quo. I don't know what signal can be sent to a dev team or a publisher team that this stuff no longer flies. And I don't know how to go back to a time where, you know, you just get the product first and then you generate the goodwill. And we, we don't have this kind of predation on goodwill before it's even generated. So I put the question to you guys, what is the signal that we as consumers can send to the people who create the products we love, the games we love. Obviously, just boycotting a game is one thing that people have tried. It doesn't really work, right? It doesn't send the right message. Just because you, Joe Bob, or me, you know, because we don't buy the game, that's not telling anybody that there's something specifically wrong with the monetization on it. So what sort of message, what can we do as a consumer to send this clear message of like, hey guys, we don't want the bollocks. We want the game, right? We just want the game. And maybe we accept higher base prices on games or we make some kind of concession, which in some platforms we're already making, looking at you, PlayStation. But what will it take? And what do we have to do as normal consumers to go back to an age where 
it's simply a good product and they're not trying to monetize every aspect of it. Let me know in the comments. Hope you have a great week and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.